Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over a trap in the Evans Gambit, and it's the Poison Rook Trap. The Evans Gambit starts out with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop here to c4, getting into the Italian game, bishop c5, the Gioco Piano, and then the Evans Gambit is pawn to b4, one of the most popular ways to attack, black playing the bishop here to c5. Now, black is typically going to accept this line, so bishop takes here on b4, and this all sets up pawn to c3, forcing the bishop to move back. It can come here to a5 and c5, the most common, and then pushing forward here with d4. So white giving up material to control the center of the board with the pawns. Now, after the pawn takes here, there's a couple ways that white can continue. Uh, sometimes you may see the pawn take here on d4, uh, but after pawn takes, this really does leave open the queen side of the board, bishop to b4, maybe bishop to d2. White gives up the bishop pair here. It doesn't have as many attackers in the game. My preferred way to play, and a lot of people play as well, is just castling on the king side. White's given up material, and so that's the name of the game, giving up material so that you can have a very strong setup, getting more material involved into the game. And so from here, if they wanted to take here on c3, you could just take back and you can see open board state. You have a lot of material developed already. You already have king safety so this is a pretty good setup and so with that black may try something else they're they're going to be up a pawn and material regardless you can see they've already taken two pawns they haven't given up any material so one way they could continue is to play d6 says yeah i don't care if you take this pawn in the center i want to open up and get more material involved into the game because right now they don't have a lot of material so after the pawn takes here on d4, bishop comes back, b6 doesn't make as much sense to play bishop here to b4 anymore because you can see there's no longer check. So bishop comes back here to b6 and then the move d5. Now this sets up the trap, but white's really just pushing forward, trying to get an advantage in the center of the board here. One of the principles that you learn in chess is always to think about what your opponent left behind with their move. And one of the things that white is leaving up once they move the move d5 is this dark square diagonal. You can see this rook here on a1 is under attack if black can ever get a piece to attack. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to bring the bishop here to d4 because then it would just get captured. You know, knight takes, knight takes here, and then the queen takes here on d4. But there's another way that if black looked at this and said, hey, my knight's under attack, but... I can actually just play queen to f6, and this is threatening this rook here on a1. So if white wants to take my knight, that's fine. Then I'm just going to go ahead and take this rook here on a1. So all very logical moves. You definitely may see this in your own Evans Gambit games, especially if you're playing the variation that I talked about, which is fairly common. The problem is this does not actually work for black. This is a poison rook variation, and it's not going to go well if they take their rook here on a1. So let's start to analyze exactly how this is going to fail. Sometimes if they look at this, they may think, okay, well, they're going to play queen to b3, and then they can get their queen back here to something like f6 and try to protect the f7 square. But white has the immediate threat of just taking here on f7. Yes, the, remember, we are giving up material as white in the Evans Gambit to gain either a tempo advantage or a lethal strike advantage, whatever that may be. You're trying to just overwhelm your opponent with a strong attack by giving up some material, and that's exactly what the rook here on a1 does. After the king takes, and we'll also look at what happens if the king doesn't take, then the king is exposed, and white can start to really attack here. Queen to b3, and this is very different than queen to b3 before because the king wasn't under attack. Now it is under attack, and so maybe they try to stop this with bishop to e6. Okay, well, that's going to fail to knight to g5. There, there's a few ways they can really counter this. You can see the knight can't be taken, so the king has to move. There's no way to really block that. So if we look at maybe king to e7, not only was the knight attacking the king, but it's also attacking the square here on e6, which is under attack by the queen. So well, I can just play queen takes on e6, and then there's going to be a checkmate right there. And it can't come over here to, you know, king to d8 because the pawn is also there to per 
to protect the queen for a checkmate as well. So if we come back, uh, another option is after knight to g5, maybe king to g6. Okay, well now just the bishop's under attack. You can just say knight takes here on e6. Yes, the queen can now get involved into the action, but the pawn takes here on b7, attacking the rook. Rook swings over here, but that's okay. Knight comes down to f4, check. And this is going to be a checkmate as well. There's no way to stop it. If the king moves back, maybe they decide not to uh, come to e7 or g6. They could also play king to e8, but this is not going to go well either. Knight to e6, taking that bishop. Queen to e5. Bishop here to b2, attacking the queen. Uh, maybe king queen takes here on e4, but then knight takes here on g7, check. You can see things are going to go extremely poorly for black. Uh, you can also at some point get this other rook involved into the game. Uh, just does not go well for black. Now if we come back, maybe black decides not to take the bishop here on f7. Could try something else, maybe king to f8. But now you can see additional threats here because after the bishop takes on g8, they really need to take with their rook. If they take with their king, then we still have the same threat as before. It's queen coming here to b3 check. And then how do they really continue? They, they probably need to come back here to f8. Doesn't make a lot of sense to now play your bishop because then you're just going to take it with your queen here. And they have really no place to go. And so instead, maybe king to f8 and then bishop here to b2. And you can see that is threatening this queen here on a one. The queen is trapped. So more than likely, they are going to take with their rook here on g8. But then knight to g5. This does set up for a pretty strong attack with knight takes here on h7. My guess is if they play it correctly, they're going to play rook to h8 to stop that. But then queen to d5 is very difficult to deal with. You can see we're already threatening the move. Queen to f7, that is going to be checkmate. Maybe queen to f6, try to stop that. But then pawn takes here on b7. Bishop takes here, attacking our queen. But then we can just take that bishop here on b7. Rook over here to e8. But then queen to c6. And you can see white's up in material, but also... This rook here on h8 is not going anywhere. The king is exposed in the center of the board. It's going to be very easy for white to overwhelm their opponent. So early on in this opening, it definitely looks like white has left open an attack on this rook here on a1. But just know, especially if you're playing the white pieces, this is completely fine because it is a poison rook. You are not worried about your opponent taking it with their queen right here on f6. Definitely not the way they should continue. Black should really be looking to play something like knight to e7. Um, yes, it does stop the queen from getting involved into the game, but it's pretty safe. They could also just play knight to a5. This attacks the bishop, which I think is completely fine. You typically don't want to have your knights on the a file or the h file. They're just not very involved into the game, but this is going to be fine from black. If you do see this, white can just play knight to c3. Yes, your bishop is going to be completely fine because if they take it, you can just play queen to a4. This is check. And then after bishop to a d7, then the queen's going to swing over here to c4. So the knight here on c3 is actually somewhat protecting this bishop here on c4, although it may not look like it. So that's how you can attack your opponent if they decide to play queen to f6 trying to take hold of your rook here on a1 that is another tr another trap hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of the poison rook trap in the evans gamut let me know in the comments below if there's other videos or type of videos you'd like me to make but thank you guys so much for watching this video i'll see you guys next time